Hello, I'm Samantha Senavaratna. I'm here in the beautiful Mila Experience Center, and today we're gonna to be making my citrus twist, which is a braided citrus-filled bread, perfect for brunch. It's delicious and beautiful. So the first thing we have to do is proof our yeast. And so I have active dry yeast in a small bowl and a little bit of warm milk. It should be about 110, 115 degrees. We'll add that to our yeast. And I like to add a tiny bit of my sugar to the yeast as well. In my mind, it means they have something to feed on. It's not essential, but I think it goes a little faster when you do that. So we're gonna let this go for five minutes until it's nice and foamy. That way we know our yeast is really active and it's ready to go in. So check out my beautiful yeast. She's all fluffy. She has that fluffy layer on top, so I know she's ready to go. Now, you can just put your yeast into your flour mixture without blooming it first, proofing it first, but this is a good way just to make sure that your yeast is still active and happy. Sometimes when yeast sits around for a really long time, it stops being as effective, so it's just a good test. But if you know your yeast is super fresh, you can just throw it in with the dry ingredients. Okay, so that goes in my mixer. I'm also adding my two cups of all-purpose flour and half a teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna add one whole egg and one egg yolk. So I'm gonna just put it in right now. Since I'm using the mixer, I can just sort of add everything at once. Makes life really easy. Now eggs, I say this all the time, they're much easier to separate when they're cold. So if you have the opportunity to separate them right out of the fridge, go ahead and do that. And then let them come up to room temperature. And you just want it to be room temperature so that it doesn't cool down your yeast mixture, really. Okay. And we have to add the remainder of our granulated sugar. Third of a cup total. So I like to do those ingredients before I add the butter, and that's just because I think that if you build up the gluten a little bit before the fat is added, you end up with sort of a more feathery bread. Of course, you can add it all in at once, but if you wanna do this step first, just take that extra little step, I think your final bread is a little bit better. But it does make incorporating the butter a little trickier. So you wanna make sure your four tablespoons of butter are very, very soft, and they'll go in a little bit easier. I'm gonna put my other two tablespoons. If at any point you see that the dough is sort of sliding around and the butter isn't incorporating, you can stop the mixer and get in there with your hands. And we're just gonna mix this dough until it's smooth and elastic and a little bit shiny. And it is sort of a sticky dough, but don't add any more flour because that will lead to dense bread. Sticky is okay. Okay, that looks good. Make sure she's in like a nice ball. Like that. And then we'll cover her up. So normally I would set my dough in a warm place covered and let it double in size. Usually with doughs that are enriched with sugar and butter and eggs, the dough rises a little bit slower. So it's better to watch the dough instead of the clock could take about an hour, could take up to two. But today I'm gonna throw it in the Mila Combi Steam Oven on the proof setting, which is a steamy 85 degrees, and it's gonna help our dough rise even faster. So while my dough is proofing, I'm gonna get my filling together. I have six tablespoons of granulated sugar in a bowl, and I'm gonna be using a mix of citrus. So I have a couple navel oranges, some lemons, and a grapefruit. I think the oranges sort of add a sweet citrus flavor, the lemons add a little bit of tang, and the grapefruit adds this really pleasant bitterness. Sounds strange, but all together it makes this beautiful flavor, and it's not too sweet. It's like the perfect, the perfect amount of sweetness. So, we'll start with our lemons. We need two tablespoons. We're gonna do two tablespoons of lemon and two tablespoons of orange. That's about two. It's ideal to use organic fruit so that you're not taking all those pesticides into your beautiful bread. Okay. Grapefruit sauce. <laughs> Smells 
so good. So now I'm just gonna mix the zest into the sugar with my fingers. I'm basically just trying to break down the skin, get all the delicious flavor, all the delicious oil out of that zest and mixed into the sugar. It's gonna be so flavorful. And to that, I'm adding three tablespoons of butter, nice and soft so that it mixes in really easily, and a pinch of salt. I like to season all of my baked goods, just like you would season any savory food. It really helps bring out the flavor. So I'm just mashing the butter in with a fork until it's uniform, just like that. So now we can get our bread and shape it. This is a second batch of dough that I let rise, then punch down, wrapped in plastic, and put in the refrigerator for a few hours. That's a really good step if you want to cut the process in two so that you don't have to do it all in one day. It also is a lot easier to work with when it's cold, so I like to do that. You could put it in the fridge, wrap it up really tight, and let it go for even three days if you wanted to just buy yourself a little bit of time. So here's my dough. Looks good. And I'm gonna roll this out into an eight by 17 inch rectangle. Now, I, you could use a little bit of bench flour if you want to at this point, but I don't really like to because it's a pretty nice dough. It should, let's test it. It should come right up without too much trouble. Mm -hmm. I can use a little flour, but I think the more flour you add, sort of the tougher your final product is. So. I like to try not to use any, but I'm finding the surface a little, a little sticky, so we'll just use a little. I love working with this dough. It's so soft and easy to roll. I also like to pick up my dough every once in a while just to make sure it's not sticking. Also to make sure if it springs back that I've got an accurate measurement on it. Sometimes I don't even use the rolling pin, I just pat it out. We are at 16 by just about eight. So we are almost there. I just wanna make sure my edges are the same thickness as the middle. Like that. So now we fill her up with our beautiful citrus butter filling. This filling is so good, you can even just spread it on toast. So make a little extra. Okay. Spread it out. You could also swap the filling if you wanted to do something other than citrus. You could use spices, obviously cinnamon. People love a cinnamon twist. Cardamom would be lovely. Chocolate would be really good. You can use this dough as sort of a base to make a lot of different delicious twists. Okay, now we'll roll it up the long way. Nice and tight. Huh. And you get a cutting board. Make sure she's sort of the same thickness all the way through. Okay, and now we'll cut this in half. Expose all those beautiful layers. Like that. So I'll just grab my Mila Combi Steam Oven Universal Tray, lined with a little bit of parchment. And we're gonna get the cut sides up that's the part you want to see. Join it at one end. And now we're just going to twist. It's a little bit simpler than a braid. There's only two strands. Just like this. So fun to work with. Beautiful. Now we'll bring her around and try to, as gracefully as possible, connect the ends. Try to kind of follow the pattern over and under, like that. Oops. And we'll 
transfer her to our sheet. Make sure that you don't have any fat spots like that. So now we can cover this again with some plastic wrap and put this back in the oven to proof. Here is my beautiful wreath. It's puffed up a little bit. Now that second rise isn't gonna take as long as the first rise, probably only 40 minutes or so, depending on how warm your house is or what kind of oven you're using to proof. But my guy looks perfectly puffed and now I'm going to give it a little egg wash. So this is just a beaten egg that we're gonna brush all over the dough. It's gonna help make it nice and shiny and brown and really beautiful. I love using a whole egg for my egg wash because I think the yolk helps make it nice and brown and the white of the egg sort of helps contribute to shine. Now this goes into a 375 degree oven. I'm using the convection bake setting with a burst of steam at the beginning, which is really gonna to contribute to a nice shiny brown crust. It should take somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes to bake all the way through. Here's our beautiful twist. I let it cool completely on the sheet before I transferred it over to this cutting board. It looks so beautifully brown and shiny. And I wanna point out this caramelized sugar down at the bottom. Some of the sugar and orange zest will leak out of the bread while it's cooking, which seems like a mistake, but it's absolutely not because what happens is it caramelizes along the bottom. So then you have this wonderful crispy edge to your twist, which is an excellent added bonus. So you could absolutely serve it just as it is. You could make a simple glaze to drizzle over. I'm just gonna shower it with a little bit of confectioner sugar, just cause I love how that looks. I don't wanna put too much though because I don't wanna cover up all those beautiful twists. Yum. Just a light dusting. And now you can taste it. I always cut it first, right where you join the two ends because that's always the piece that looks the most wonky. <laughs> so I like to take it out first. Look at this. Yum, and I just have to show you that beautiful bottom. That's gonna be so crunchy and delicious. All right, I'm gonna get right into it. Mm. <laughs> the outside is crisp, the inside is super tender. It's sweet, but not too sweet citrusy, I think it's just perfect.